Happy fall everyone! So in this video I would like to share with you three warning signs of emotional abuse some preliminary information about why people engage in emotional abuse and a few first aid tips for dealing with emotional abuse. So it is often a case that if a person is a target of emotional abuse, they are not aware of that from the very beginning. They gradually become aware of that when they start feeling differently and when they start experiences seeing some negative consequences. So here are three warning signs of emotional abuse that you may want to be aware of. So the first sign, is it the case that one person or a group of people or maybe even an entire environment or an institution have become problematic for you? So they have become at the center of your attention. They have been causing you some mental or emotional di distress or maybe even psychological pain. So is that the case? The second sign is, did you try to do something about that? Did you try changing your behavior or confronting them or getting advice about what to do about it and following that advice? But nevertheless, the problematic behavior of these people didn't change or of that person didn't change. And the third warning sign of emotional abuse, is it true that one or more of the following have changed for you? Your behavioral functioning how you behave and how you're able to control your behavior. Since the offset of these events with these problematic people or person, did your behavior change? Did it change how you have been able to control your behavior? How about your affective functioning? Did that change? Affective functioning is what you feel and how well you're able to control your emotions. So the predominant feelings that you have been having since the offset of this potentially abusive behavior, did they change more to the negative compared to how you felt before? And how about your overall mental and physical well-being? Did it change since the offset of this uh, potentially abusive behavior? Have your mood changed? Uh, did you experience perhaps signs of dis depression or anxiety or maybe even PTSD? Have you had some kind of physical signs that could not be explained otherwise, like headaches, stomaches, chronic pain, or other symptoms of this kind? So all of this would be warning signs of emotional abuse. Let us summarize one more time. What are warning signs of emotional abuse? So. The first sign is that one person or a group of people or an institution have come to the center of your attention and have been causing you problems. The second sign is that you've tried to do something about it, but what normally would have worked in other situations didn't work in this case. And the third sign is that your functioning has changed and your overall well-being has changed for the worse. So your behavioral functioning has changed for the worse, your emotional functioning has changed for the worse, and your overall mental and physical well-being have, have, have changed for the worse since the offset of this problematic behavior by one or more people. Okay, so these are warning signs of emotional abuse. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to call the person or a group of people or an institution who are potential abusers, I'm just going to refer to them as the abuser, just because it's easier to talk about it that way. So the second thing that I would like to share with you in this video is why people do it, why people engage in emotional abuse. So the, the main reason for why people engage in emotional abuse is to maintain power and control. So power and control, if they want to have that over you, this is the main reason for anybody to engage in emotional abuse. Now, why they want to have power and control, there might be different explanations for that. Most often than not, uh, the abuser somehow, for some reason, uh, legitimate or completely irrational, sees you as a threat. So it doesn't mean you're actually a threat to them, but the abuser sees you as a threat to them. And so 
they want to maintain power and control over you because that gives them a sense of safety. They may derive their sense of worth and value by putting down other people, including those who make them feel insecure. And that's why the abuser might be engaging in emotional abuse to maintain power and control. So this, this is sort of like underlying cause of the behavior and it's more theoretical than practical but it's actually much easier to address emotional abuse if you understand this that power and control are at the core of emotional abuse and so if you google power and control wheel of emotional abuse you will find several entries now there are different power and control wheels some of them are for intimate partner abuse others are for abuse of children I would like to share with you um, my own sort of vision of a power of and control wheel that basically has only two sections in it but so two sections it's easy to remember and it's like a one-two punch of emotional abuse the first punch is to violate the second punch is to gaslight so what how would the uh, violation look like so violation can be the violation of boundaries uh, psychological or emotional violation of ethical rules violation of moral rules and overall violation of your integrity as a human being your emotional integrity your physical integrity your intellectual integrity and your spiritual integrity so the first punch of emotional abuse is usually violation of one of those things so violation it means violence it hurts so if you have experienced that you will react the normal reaction would be that you will want to defend your boundaries you will want to defend your integrity you will want to speak up when ethical or moral rules are violated so the second punch of emotional abuse is to gaslight to make it seem like it didn't happen or blame you for your reaction and make it seem as if your reaction is the problem. Completely ignore that there was violation that, that took um, place. Ignore the circumstances of your reaction and look at what you have done and try to convince you that there is something wrong with you. This is called gaslighting. That's a term that came from a movie that uh, came out in 1940s and you may want to watch this movie. Gaslighting is basically invalidating your reality. So making you doubt, making you think, have I gone insane? Did this person do this or not do this? Was it my reaction that was inappropriate? Is there something wrong with me? So that's the second punch of emotional abuse. And so this is why it's called the power of con and control wheel because violate and then invalidate or gaslight, violate and gaslight, and you somehow get on this wheel and this is how the abuser maintains power and control over you because you continue to get violated and yet your reaction is then invalidated you continue questioning whether or not your reaction was appropriate and whether or not all of these things have been happening to you and this is precisely why you are not getting out of this cycle you remain in the cycle and this is how the abuser is able to maintain their power and control over you so this is a very important thing to understand about emotional abuse. So let's just summarize this, this portion. Why do people engage in emotional abuse? It's because of power and control. The most simple power and control uh, wheel is a two punch. Uh, violate and gaslight, violate and gaslight, violate and gaslight. And that's how the abuser maintains their control over you. The third portion of this video that I wanted to share with you is first aid.
I'm going to share a few more videos about how to deal with emotional abuse because it's not a simple question and it's usually not that simple to stop emotional abuse. But here is some first aid to, to start improving the situation. Now, I would like to warn you, if you have realized that you have been emotionally abused, it is dangerous to go to the emotional abuser and confront them until you have kind of collected yourself and have considered the consequences and thought it through and got more information about it. The psychology of the emotional abuser is such that you going and confronting them may may even escalate the situation. So the first aid is not that, not going to them and confronting them. Having given this warning, I want to share with you some first aid that you can give yourself actually uh, uh, if you realize that you have been experiencing emotional abuse. Number first thing that you want to do if you have been experiencing emotional abuse is to validate your own reality because this is how you counteract this one-two punches of violence and gaslighting, violence and gaslighting. You validate your own reality. So how, how can you do that? You can write down a timeline of events what this person, what the abuser has been doing and just write down the facts. Also write down your emotions, how you felt when this person was doing these things to you. So validate your own reality, acknowledge the facts and acknowledge your own emotions. Let yourself feel how you felt. Try to release these emotions if you can or at least accept that you've had them. If you release the emotions and of course do it in a safe way safe for you and other people the second step is engage in intensive self-care emotional abuse can have consequences that can be debilitating if you have been in this power and control wheels for a little for a while um, chances are that you need some intensive self-care so that means physical self-care emotional self-care social self-care and spiritual self-care uh, physical self-care, the basic hygiene, taking a shower, making it pleasant for yourself, brushing your teeth, making sure that you eat healthy meals at least three times per day and that you exercise. Emotional self-care is validating your emotions and I have a video on dealing with emotions that you may want to check out and also an entire playlist on emotional hygiene. One of the basic things with emotional self-care is having compassion toward yourself and acknowledging your emotions, observing your emotions and not judging yourself for your emotions. Social self-care. Make sure that you get together with people who make you feel good. This is not the time to get together with people after meeting with whom you feel even worse. Get together with the people who give you support. You do not have to talk to them about the emotional abuse if you don't want to. If it's just gonna keep your focus on the problem, then maybe you want to do something fun with them. But social self-care is very important and finding a spiritual self-care who are you a spiritual person how do you experience your spirituality do you get connected with nature do you meditate do you do mindfulness do you pray do you attend uh, re religious services but make sure that you do those things that makes you make you feel better so just to summarize your first aid that you can administer to yourself is to validate your own reality and to engage in intensive self-care. So to summarize the entire video, what did we talk about in this video? Do you still remember? So we talked about the warning signs of emotional abuse. The first warning sign is, do you still remember? Somebody or a group of people or an institution have become problematic for you. They have become at the center of your attention and they have caused you a lot of trouble you have tried to do something about it that's the second time uh, uh, thing you have tried to do something about it but nothing seemed to have worked and it may have even gotten worse the third warning sign of emotional abuse is that your behavioral functioning has changed your uh, affective functioning your emotional functioning has changed and your overall well-being has gotten worse 
The second thing, the second point that we have discussed uh, today is why people uh, engage in emotional abuse, is to maintain power and control. The simplest form of power and control will is the one-two punch of emotional abuse, which is violate and gaslight. And what is the first aid that you can administer to yourself if you're experiencing emotional abuse is number one, validate your own reality, validate what has happened, what are the facts and how you felt about them and how you feel about them. And second, uh, engage in intensive self-care, including physical self-care, emotional self-care, social self-care and spiritual self-care. This is all for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel. Please support my work. Hit the bell notification button if you want to know when the next video comes out. I will be putting out more videos on emotional abuse. Happy fall again, everybody. Uh, be safe. Stay away from your abusers if you can. And give yourself the first aid. Bye.